In this video, I'll explain why the quotient rule works. Let's start with an example. q of x equals e to the x over x squared plus 1. And we need to make sure that the denominator isn't 0. Luckily for us, x squared plus 1 is always positive, so this won't be an issue here. Next, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. Next, let's take the derivative of each side of this equation. On the left, we need to use the product rule. First, we use the first term. Then we need the derivative of the second term. We don't have a formula for it, so we'll just write q prime of x. Then we add the second term times the derivative of the first. And on the right, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. We're now left with this equation, which involves q prime of x, but doesn't tell us what q prime of x is exactly. But we can do some algebra to solve for q prime of x. First, we'll subtract the second term from both sides, and then tidy this up a bit, and then divide both sides by x squared plus 1. And now, q prime of x is equal to e to the x minus q of x times 2x divided by x squared plus 1. And we have a formula for q of x, so let me make some room here. And now we can substitute the formula for q of x. And this looks a little complicated and maybe not too familiar, but I'm going to do something that might seem like a bit of a trick. I'm going to multiply this fraction by x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. You might be thinking, wait a minute, is that okay? Since it's x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1, I'm really just multiplying by 1, so I'm not changing anything here. And, well, this is going to be a little tricky for me to rearrange, so I'm going to rewrite q prime down here. So first, we'll need to distribute the x squared plus 1 in the numerator to both terms in the numerator of q prime. So when we multiply the x squared plus 1 by the first term, we get x squared plus 1 times e to the x. And when we multiply x squared plus 1 by the second term, it cancels with the x squared plus 1 in the denominator. So we get e to the x times 2x. Then when we multiply the denominators to get x squared plus 1, all squared. And now let's think about what we have here. If we look back at our original function, we can see that this first term is the denominator of q times the derivative of the numerator of q. The second term is the numerator of q times the derivative of the denominator of q. And the denominator of q prime is equal to the denominator of q squared. And this is exactly what the quotient rule says. And we could have done all of this with any quotient. Here's the reasoning a little more generally. Suppose we have a function q of x, which is a quotient of f of x and g of x. We can multiply both sides of the equation by g of x. Then we compute the derivative of each side. On the left, we use the product rule to get g times q prime plus g prime times q. And on the right, we get f prime. We can then solve this equation for q prime of x to get f prime minus g prime times q all over g. Then we'll substitute f over g for q and then multiply the whole thing by g over g, which, after doing some algebra, gives us this formula. And this is how we get the quotient rule.